up everybody, it's Kellyaxon here, and if you guys enjoyed this video, you guys should uh, join our Discord server by becoming patrons over on Patreon. So today we are actually going to be talking about the Ruby manga. Uh, if you guys don't know, this came out a couple months ago. I've well, had it in my room since like February. I, I've, I read it, god, when did I read it? Uh, probably about a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. when I read it. Anyway, so I wanted to do sort of like a review of it, I guess. So I read it, I took some notes, I had some stuff that I wanted I to talk about. I did read it, but I, I read it about pretty, a month and a half pictures. ago, and I didn't put notes. Well, I have hit, notes hit, for both hit. of us. All right, so, sweet. that's alright. Is so, that the first time you've spoken for me? The start of the no the manga has some like character profiles and a glossary, and I think that they did things really well. Like, they cover Revenant, Aura, the Faunus, Dust, like, they make it seem like, like, hey, just in case you don't know, like, here are some terms you have to, you have like, to remember. Like, imagine... Like, imagine if, uh, at the beginning of, if, like, they just didn't do the, uh, Remnant Reviewed or whatever fuck, uh, World, World of, of Remnant. Remnant, Remnant Reviewed, and instead just, like, here's three pages out of a manga, that's all the time you need. Mm -hmm. It's convenient. And when we start, they're already at Beacon. And it makes it seem like there are gonna be more of these, just because, like, why would you give, you know what I mean? So it's, like, to review or to, like... You know, to get you invested, you know what I'm saying? So I don't think that this is going to be the only one ever. And there is another um, manga anthology that is coming out by Viz Media. It's and, the same and, people that published this one, but it, it seems. like, is that in any way related to this one? Or I this don't one just think like... so. Like, they're obviously connected because they're both Ruby, but I think they're different. Yeah, because this one is, like, nothing more than just, like, a starter pack. Like, yeah. it just describes... Yeah, like, this is, like, to get you into... Like, this is basically, like, the white trailer, the yeah. red trailer. Like, that's basically and what it is. And then one bit with a tentacle grip. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the tentacles later. So, I've seen that. The art is pretty beautiful. Way. Like, I think it that it, it looks very nice. And there are 12 chapters beautiful. and uh, 237 pages. It took me less than two hours to read it, I think. But yeah, remember, I was taking jump. notes. Yeah. Uh, so let's start with the red trailer. So, like, Ruby has this unnerving smile while she's killing one of the Grimm. And it's a little scary. And I'm going to put a picture of it right here. Because uh, I because I took a picture, obviously. And Obviously. Cardin looks better in this manga than in the actual show. He is also in this. So Ruby does the red trailer sort of as like a flashback or whatever. And then Cardin comes and throws John across a table while uh, Team Ruby is talking about like dust or whatever. Like for those so people that like weren't Cardin paying attention. Yeah. It's but like Cardin looks great, which is weird. Like, you know what I mean? Like he just, I don't know. He looks does better he look than he handsome, does in the show. No, he, he just, he boy. looks better. I don't know how to explain it. Also, Glinda's here, and Glinda is a meddling bitch, and that's what I appreciate. Also, this is gonna be a spoilery review, by the way, if you guys want to read it yourself. If you've seen, like, the first If you've seen the show, you've pretty much, yeah. Um, but there are some cool things in here, and we'll get to that. So, Glinda's kind of like, hey, if y'all want to fight, y'all should fight in the arena, and Ruby's like, what? And Cardin's like, what? But and like, Cardin you know. fights Jean, I believe? No, 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 he oh, fights Ruby. Ruby, I mean, Ruby kicks his ass. Yeah, that's basically that's what that. happens. And that's so, I love thing. that about Glinda. Glinda's just like, hey, if you guys want to fight each other, because obviously they're getting at Cardin for bullying John. Hey, let's do this in an appropriate way. And, uh, you know, like, I also don't know. Like I just think that, he's so funny. That Glinda believes that Ruby's gonna kick his ass, so it's just like, I already know how this Yeah, I think that was part of it, and this then Ospin comes enough. and he watches, right? Um, and so what I thought was sort of interesting about this was that, you know, Cardin sort of picks on Team Ruby for being Ospin's favorite, and I'm like, that was something that never really happened in the show, and I would have loved to see that. That was a nice little addition that, like, that the other teams in the school, like, kind of have a, have a sniffle, I suppose, that, you know, like, that Team Ruby is, uh, sort of, you know, Ospin's, uh, Pick, pick uh, me assholes, you know what I'm pick saying? Me assholes, anyway, like student, teacher pets. Yeah, teacher pets. Wish, I also wish they showed Beacon as more of like a hospital, like competitive place. Well, I mean, I think that was part of it, right? If even team, because we thought, oh, Team Ruby's but fine. It's just John getting bullied. But they right? don't show it. Rather, I should say, they don't show it as a hospital competitive place in the show and in the manga. You get a bit of an idea. Yeah, that's that. what I'm saying. Uh, and during the fight with Cardin, she also mentions how she wished she like she was a normal girl, and that's important for a couple things. So like this book or this manga I should say is sort of like about Ruby like coming to terms with the fact that she does want to become a huntress like she kind of flip-flops in this book a little bit in the manga um and so that's also important for another video we did on why Ruby maybe hasn't acknowledged the silver eyes and that's only like uh echoed in the manga it's like oh didn't I want to be a normal girl like why am I doing this but she do doesn't they want to still get do the you have silver eyes which I find funny they because didn't because Ospin's not really uh oh. in here oh yeah he's more aloof yeah he's in the background, we'll, we'll talk about about that later. There's I some stuff I want to say about Ozzy. I think it makes him making him more mysterious mm -hmm. in the manga than in the. 
Also, Roman is introduced at the end of the Cardin fight scene, and, like, he's- he's alright. Like, he's great as usual. My one complaint with this manga is they have Roman, like, with a character profile, but Roman doesn't do anything. And so we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the next chapter starts with Child Weiss, and that's pretty cute, so I took a picture of that. And... Look at her boy! <laughs> And it's about, like, her father's indifference to her, and then the, the night fight, and what I really liked about this scene is, first she was talking back to the secretary, but we see how all of, sort of, the staff in Weiss's house are against her, too. Like, it's not just her dad, like, her dad has paid these people to train her and make this impossible, beatable grim so she'll fail and have to stay in Atlas, right? You see, like, the length to her father's manipulation, and you also see Child Winter being like, hey, like, Weiss is pouting or whatever, so she's like, hey, if you want to get out of here, you can't just give up like that. That's kind of what she says, right? And, uh... In the manga, I thought what was interesting, like, she says that, like, she's not doing this for the Shnee family name, because the secretary's like, you're a Shnee, what the fuck are you doing, right? But she's saying that she wants to make herself proud, and I think that's something that was sort of lost in the show a little bit. Like, she, I think she does mention it a little, but, like, for the most part, it was about, like, making sure that the Shnee family legacy wasn't ruined by her father, but in this, it's also talking about her as a person, so that was kind of nice. Uh, the other thing was Blake, uh, and I think that they handled the Fauna's discrimination scene better, just because there's a page in the manga, and I'll show that to you guys. I don't know, I just thought that that was a nice little improvement, uh, so I took a picture of it. And you also have, like, a younger, uh, version of Blake here, and Adam says for her to come with him and take back her dignity... Uh, and so I think that right, that was meet pretty when, interesting. You see when Adam and Blake first meet. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. And that so I thought that kind of showed, like, why maybe Blake got wrapped up with him. Because in this, it seems like people are yelling at her or something. And Adam's like, hey, come with me, I'll help you. You know what I mean? So that, may, I don't know, that just makes sense. I feel like that's an improvement. Because people have complained they don't see enough Faunus discrimination in the show. But in the manga, it starts with Blake you know being this show can use More racism. Anyway. Uh, and then... Uh, you know, they have the train scene, and I like how they make their clones look in the manga, if that makes sense. I took a picture of that, too. And the fight was great as all- like, I don't know how I'm supposed to review a fight in the manga, you know what I mean? It looked, it looked, really looked great! Pretty. Like, what else am I supposed to say? Like, like you I don't get, know. You get a great idea for the energy and the movement. Yeah, and, like, that, that's a good even, thing to and say. No, and no matter, like, the shot- even, I feel like the- the- the drugs get more detailed in the fighting scenes, and I, yeah. just, I just really enjoy it. It's uh, pretty. Yang has the bar stuff, and, uh, before that, though, there is a scene with Blake with her ears out, and Yang's like, oh, look at Blake's ears, they're so cute, what do you think, Weiss? And Weiss is just kind of like, ugh, like, you know, when you're inside, like, you can take that off, you know, it must get musty, or something like that. Musty? Or something like that, who you has, know what I Who mean? doesn't get musty ears every once in a while? So, yeah. it show it really captures all of their characters pretty perfectly, because Ruby's asleep when this happens, Yang's like, oh, look at her cute little ears, right? And then Weiss is sort of like, ugh, well, you know, take care Be of practical. yourself, I guess. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she's a sort of a, uh, sundere about it, right? If that makes sense? Like, she's trying to act cold, but she does... You know, she's she she's basically telling Blake she to take off the bow, the but saying it, you know, in a roundabout way. Um, yeah. So, oh, she said clammy, not musty. Same thing, really. <laughs> not necessarily. Anyway. Uh, the fight with Junior is pretty great in here. That's most of Yang's thing. They don't talk that much. It's just, like, her fighting uh, the twins and then her fighting Junior and Junior being like, yeah, I don't know who the fuck your mom is. Go home. So this was, like, I don't know, not a doll part of the manga for me, but I was a little disappointed. Like, I thought Junior would say more stuff about Raven, I guess, here, but he didn't. But that's okay. Like, I like in the show, he didn't really say anything about her yeah, either. Yeah, so when they do the yellow trailer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I think that the fight is nice, like Hunter said, there's nice energy, it's a nice, like, there's nice flow. Uh, and now we come back into the present, so this is where things get interesting. So Juniper's like, I don't want to sit back and let, like, we don't want to be sidekicks to Team Ruby, we want to go do our own thing. And so they go on a grim extermination mission, and I thought this was really interesting, because we never really got to see what huntsmen do. Like, I guess, like, you know what I mean? Like, we never saw the kind of missions that they go on, and so now we get the idea that in this world there is a grim extermination like, jobs that they can take or whatever, that they can track Grimm sort of thing. Uh, I've always seen that guest being the, uh, like, people guest and theorize that, and, like, you see that in a lot of fan fiction, but mm -hmm. it's interesting too. And, and they're doing it in there. Mountain Glen, and so this is where the Hydra comes in. Uh, so Juniper right, fights 
uh, like, a bunch of Grimm, and then basically what happens is this is the only thing that Roman does, okay? Roman opens the door to Mountain Glen, and the tentacle Grimm walks out. Er, or not the tentacle Grimm, Boy. but, like, the Boy. possession the possession Grim thing, like, just leaves and then goes into the forest and bothers Juniper. Like, that's all that Roman does, and it wasn't even intentionally. He just, like, opens the door to get down there and, like, lets it go by accident. You understand what I mean? And so that thing basically is a possession Grim, and it caused all of the uh, King Taiju Grim to, to fuse. So that's what creates the Hydra, is this sort of possession Grim. And I thought this tied in really nicely, because Weiss obviously fights a possession Grim earlier. It's the one that possesses the suit of armor that yes. she fights. Uh, so it was a nice little, I don't want to say foreshadowing, but it's like, oh, like we know what this is already. Connect it to the future sort of thing. Uh, and then John does some good, like, strategy here, and, uh, Team Ruby also comes to the rescue, so I guess rip Team Juniper not being Team Ruby sidekicks, but John's like, hey, like, let's attack it at the base where they're all connected, and I'm like, that's a smart thing to do. <laughs> good job, John, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, like, Roman doesn't necessarily do anything in the manga. Like, he's just, like, you see, like, hints of him doing Mountain Glen stuff, which we obviously saw in the show and where we are now, I think. Um, but yeah, he just lets the Grim go and the Grim just kind of floats away. Like, that's basically <laughs> what happens. But it's nice to see, because this, like, sort of expands on the Grim, too. So now we know there are other Grim that can fuse other Grim together and cause big problem. Mm -hmm. Problem. Big problem. Big problem. Well, that's right. a big problem. Anyway, so here's where things get wild, okay? After they're done that, Penny comes out of fucking nowhere. Oh, yeah. She and wasn't what, introduced. She have a jetpack? She has a jetpack. So she here's where things jet get interesting in terms of the lore around Penny. So Roman you is in an airplane. You better a picture of that backpack. I will. So Penny is in an airplane. Okay. And she's an airplane boy. She's in... No, no, Roman is in an airplane. Sorry. And Penny has a jetpack. And... She's doing some sort of field training, and she's like, I sense a big collection of Grimm right up ahead. So we know that she has that power, right? And so that's only embellishing... Spidey senses? Yeah, so that's only... Not embellishing, but it's almost like adding on to the lore of Penny. She's supposed to be, like, something that the Huntsman works, yeah. can, you know, can use so they don't have to go out and fight something themselves. So obviously she has some sort of Grimm tracker where she can sense a big collection of Grimm because you'd think that if they're trying to get her to go out into the battlefield, that's what she's for. She senses Grimm and then takes them out. So that's a nice addition to her powers that we didn't see in the show. And, uh, like, I don't, I, I don't know. I think that that reading for Grimm thing, that's, like, super interesting. I don't know if that's just me. Because, like, you get, like, the sense of what she's for more. Mm -hmm. Because, like, in... Ruby, she was just a robot, and we didn't really get any specifics on her powers, but in the manga, like, to have a Grimm sensor, you wonder, you immediately understand, okay, so she's a robot that's supposed to sense Grimm and destroy them, right? But she also is like, this is an unauthorized airplane, do I blow it up? And so she blows up Roman, and that's just kind of what happens, I, like, right? It takes away a lot of the mystery of Penny, where it's just yeah. like the girls don't know, and we don't know exactly But I guess it's for is. us, because we already know who Penny is, like, I'm guessing by this point... People already are aware. And it does say unknown, so we don't actually get her name or whatever, I don't think. Except um, everyone who's ever, like, watched yeah. Ruby's. So for a new like, person, oh, they would be like, oh, what what's going on here, right? But for us, it's just, it gives her more character. It gives her more skill sets. You know, it's more interesting. At least for us. I don't know, I really like that. Uh, Crow also appears, because, like, at the end of the thing, it's sort of Ruby... Like, saying how much she wants to be a huntress in flashbacks, and so you have Yang sort of in a flashback as a big motivator for her, and you also have Crow, right? So the manga kind of comes full circle. Like, you start with Ruby unsure of whether she wants to be a huntress or not. You see what sort of made all of the other girls decide they wanted to be a huntress, right? And then at the very end, you have Ruby wanting to, um, like, fully committing, right? You understand? And so I think that it's nice that that came full circle, right? Uh, Ublek and Port also come up, and, like, their character's done really well, because Ublek's, like, a possession Grimm in the wild! I've heard about it having skills like these, but we've never seen it in person. Ah, oh, if I was with you, I could have collected the data! You know, whatever he says. Ooh, data! Yeah. And I think this really works, and again, like I said, because Weiss did fight a possession Grimm, it was almost like a little foreshadowing thing, like, hey, remember that Weiss did this, it'll come back later, right? Uh, Ozpin has a weird scene with Glinda, though, because Glinda's like, hey, Ozpin, like, cool it, they're just children. And Ozpin's like, no, you misunderstand me, like, they have to fight the battle, the battle of life. Like, he says something super pretentious, right? But right after that, you know, like, 
the big battle of Grimm and how Grimm are, like, the rejection of light. Like, just a bunch of weird shit, right? But then right after, there's a- right on the next page, there's a scene with Roman. And Roman says that Ruby will learn how cunning adults can be. And it seems weird to put that side by side, you understand? Like, you have Glinda calling out Ozpin for, you know, I guess- I don't want to say thinking of them more as children, but thinking of them, like, almost as soldiers, I guess? You know, as, like, more pawns to, you know, fight his war, right? And then you have Roman like, oh, don't worry, Ruby, you'll see how cunning adults can be. Like, to have that juxtaposed next to each other, like, it almost seems like- He's talking about Ozpin. Like, obviously he means himself, but to have that, you you understand what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know, if you guys have ever seen shows do this, they'll, like, say, you know, like, we don't know who the bad guy is yet, but, like, we'll find out soon. And then they, like, cut to the bad guy, like, but the audience doesn't necessarily know there's a bad guy yet. Does that make sense? I think yes. they do that in Zootopia a couple times. Yeah, that they cut the back to lady. the sheep lady, and, like, we're supposed to not think anything of it, and so that's just kind of... Like, maybe it's just because I already think Ozpin's sketchy, but I just thought that was interesting, because for Roman to say that right next to the Ozpin panel where Glinda's calling him out for being a little sketchy, you know what I mean? Take... Just make it that way you will. I just thought it was interesting. Um, and despite not being shown up... Uh, I, I suppose, like, Neo, Emerald, Mercury, uh, Cinder, they're all in, in the, the final thing. Page. And you see, um, and you see like, Sun and Neptune, like, everybody's drawn really well, yeah, everyone's it, pretty hot. It's, like, not, it's <laughs> not like there's, like, a reunion in the last thing, it's just, It's like, just all of the characters. It's, like, split, it's, like, a, it's yeah. like a shattered page. I'm gonna show says, them. So you're just, like, it's like, oh, look at all these people that we get to see later, and I mm -hmm. hope... Imagine if Neo talks in oh, the God. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Altogether, like, this was fun. You know, it gave us more fleshed out versions of the trailers while showing off some new Grimm and, like, showing off Penny's skill set and, like, I don't know. It made Cardin better as a bully because you can see now why he's, like, doesn't make it okay, but you can see that he's bullying Ruby and then because they, they're they teacher's pets. I you know what I mean? I think bullying Team Ruby is a good idea because, like, we thought, I assumed that they were, like, top of the school or whatever, but it seems like that Cardin didn't think so. Cardin didn't think they were hot shit, you know? So that was nice. Um, you know, the Ozpin and Glinda interaction was pretty interesting for Ozpin's character, like, if he becomes a little shady later, because Glinda does seem to disagree with what he's doing, you know? She's like, oh, they're children, they need proper education, like, that's something that she says there, but Ozpin's like, oh, you misunderstand me, and I'm like, do we, though? We don't give educations here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. We uh, give that's kind of all I had to say, things. I think. Like, it looked great. Uh, the only problem I have is Roman was sort of introduced, but he didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, he didn't directly interact has, with anyone. It has, it has less room to, to breathe than the show. Yeah. And I think it falters under that, but it is still a very pretty looking... Like, it did everything else yeah. right, but, like, it would have been nicer, maybe, if Roman intentionally let that thingy go, because he didn't seem like he did it on purpose. He was like, ew, what's that? And just sort of let it escape, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, into the wilderness, like, he didn't... He didn't do it on purpose, right? And so if he actually released a Grim, like, I feel like that would be more compelling. But, like, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you what to do. And I think my favorite thing is Weiss. Just because we see, like, her father is also manipulating the people that work for him. It's not just about manipulating her. Like, he has all the staff on his side, too. And, like, even she can't even trust the people that are supposed to be, like, serving her. Right? Other than Klein, obviously. I mean, I can always trust my servants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think that's sort of it. And, uh, yeah, it's a good piece to have when discussing the show, I think. Because it is, basically, they've said that it's canon until it's not. Like, <laughs> it's with the manga. Like, if, if something ever gets contradicted that was in the manga, like, that happens in the show, like, say, instead, they show a different version of Weiss's backstory, and it's not Winter, but it's, say, Willow, or whatever, then the manga isn't... It doesn't count anymore, basically. But until, it's like, I don't know, innocent until proven guilty, like, it's canon until it's not canon. Wouldn't That's it what suck the writers if they were like, it. look at this character, they're gay in the manga, and then later on it's like, well, actually. Well, well, <laughs> uh, we'll get to that, maybe, if they make any more of these. But anyway, uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed that. I think that. it sold pretty well, so we're yeah. likely to see it. Well, we are getting Red Like Roses anthology, right? That is yeah, coming Yeah, there's out. another and one, so and This is somewhat apparently. related, but they're different. Like, they're two different mangas. Are they made there's by a different the story. Name they're all Viz Media, so they're all published by the same person, but I think they may be drawn by someone else. But yeah. That's they're weird. all, Rooster Teeth all, like, said that this is okay, basically, right? So it's all important to have if you're a fan of Ruby. 
I think. Please buy more of our shit. Yeah. Uh, we want to, like, get those licenses. So, if I'm out. honest, I would recommend you guys buying the anthology, because there are going to be four of them. There's going to be, you know, Red Like Roses, and then there's going to be whatever Weiss's line is in the song I'm blanking out. Right? There's going to be a lot of them. So, one of them is coming out in a couple weeks, or I think by the time you guys watch this video, it'll probably be out, actually, because I think it's May 17th, and then the other one is sometime in August. So, like, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that, and we'll see you later. Bye!